Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the access of trade uh, weekend update show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody is having uh, a great summer. It's crazy. It's almost, it, almost Ju August, July. Well, almost August. What am I saying? Almost August already. How quickly time flies, man. It's really amazing how quick, uh, the summer, uh, just goes by. And for all of us who live here in the Northeast, boy, oh boy, I mean, we only got what a couple of months left of nice weather. And then we go back to hell, right? So before we go back to hell, let's enjoy it. Let's enjoy our lives, our families, our health. That's the most important part. I, I think mo most people, uh, when you're growing up and you're in your early 20s and you're, you know, testosterone is flowing and all that, you want the, the cool car and the watch and all that good stuff. But once you hit a certain age, you really appreciate that true wealth is health and happiness, health, happiness, uh, and family. A lot of you guys are are well off. A lot of you guys are rich and has nothing to do with money. Uh, so the perspectives of life uh, really changes very, very quickly as you get older and older. And, and again, appreciate what you have, right? It really is appreciate what you have uh, and not what you want. Everything else is a cherry on top. Health and happiness, uh, health, definitely family uh, is the most important thing. If you are brand new to the channel, guys, thank you uh, very much for tuning in, spending a couple of minutes with us. Uh, if you like the content, if you like what we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, that's all it is. Nobody's trying to predict the future. Nobody's trying to figure out where stock is going to be three months from now based on uh, backlog orders or this and that. And the other thing, we're trying to get ready for tomorrow, right? Or tomorrow in this case, um, Monday. Uh, and if you are like what we're doing, all I ask is just take a second, uh, click a like, uh, click a like, share, subscribe, and we will continue to provide uh, as much value as possible to your day-to-day -day, uh, trading career. So crazy week, right? Crazy week. Uh, we talked about uh, what happens if we lost the engulfing candle from a couple of weeks ago. Obviously played out very, very well uh, that direction. But uh, Saturday, last Saturday, if you guys remember, I recorded the video. And then after uh, there was the Trump uh, assassination attempt. Uh, so that really kicked off the week. Uh, on the other side of the party, you saw a lot of pressure, right? A lot of pressure from the Democrats uh, to trying to get Joe Biden to step off the ticket. Even Obama uh, chimed in, and that's a very, very big piece uh, for the Democrats that said, hey, Joe, maybe you should bow this one out. And, and, and unfortunately, again, uh, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, obviously he's going through He's going through it, right? I mean, I don't know, what is the guy, 85, 90 years old? He's suffering, obviously, from dementia. Nope, I wouldn't wish dementia on my worst uh, enemy. So it's just a tragic, you know, kind of a tragedy. But for the, for the sake of the country, again, I think no matter if you're a Democrat or Republican, I think uh, it's best for him to kind of bow out gracefully, enjoy uh, the remainder of his uh, life. Uh, also, so we saw on Friday um, was global IT outages, right? hospitals, um, you know, uh, Microsoft, Crowd, uh, Amazon, all, you know, all got hit on all these things. You woke up, you know, you woke up uh, Friday morning and airplanes weren't flying. Hospitals weren't, uh, you know, functioning properly. So you had a lot of stuff going on. You had a lot of data going on, the beige book, job of this, this, that, and the third. But most important is where the markets came from and why we were so emphatic about uh, talking about last week's or two weeks ago's engulfing channel. If you watch any of the videos in the last week, we talked about the importance of what happens if this engulfing channel gets confirmed. What happens uh, when the semiconductors lose that whole channel as well? Again, that was the big group. If you've been watching the video. We've been talking about this for two weeks now. This is the big group that led us up, showed us a lot of softness. And once we reclaimed, well, they lost um, that engulfing candle from a couple of weeks ago that already took out three weeks worth of buying, you knew there was going to be more selling pressure. And as we saw the continued disconnect from the market, right? You saw the Dow Jones doing great. You saw the IWM doing great. 
and the QQQs not so much. So we saw the disconnect. We were prepared for the disconnect. We talked about this video after video after video. You guys remember there was a, actually a, a 24-hour cycle that the Dow was up nearly 900 points and the Nasdaq continuously got worse. The selling pressure got heavier. And all I always kept on talking about was stay in your lane. Who cares about the Dow? Again, if you trade the Dow, that's what you care. But I care about the Nasdaq 100. I care about uh, the ramifications when the members start losing, especially technical damage. And it gives me a lot of value uh, back to the downside. And when you go through uh, the week, we saw some phenomenal pivots to the downside. Um, you know, stocks got hit, right? That was the point. We you know we talked about uh, AMD, you know, three videos ago. Hey, what happens if it loses the five day moving average? We got the answer. Uh, we talked about Microsoft's weakness. What happens if it loses its bear flag and starts losing the 20 day moving average? Well, we got that answer. We started talking about Amazon. Well, what happens if Amazon starts losing the 34 day uh, EMA? We got that answer. And you started seeing stock after stock after stock in the same group over and over and over again, Apple, right? Apple is one of the ones we talked about coming off the top. What happens if it loses the five day? Again, we got our answer. Again, what happens if it loses the 20 day? Well, we'll get our answer as well. Uh, even Tesla, right? Gave us finally a nice pivot on Friday, uh, put in this channel here. We talked about it all week, guys, video after video. You know, it keeps on putting in lower eyes, lower eyes, lower eyes. Again, what happens if it lost the 10 day moving average? Well, we got our answer on Friday. So, uh, you know, the cues are heavy. The NASDAQ remains heavy. The other indexes are now getting pulled. We talked about this on Wednesday's video about the parabolic run, uh, parabolic run in the IWM. The first thing I said on, on Wednesday's video is, hey, you, your first trade probably shouldn't be buying the IWM after this massive, massive move. Again, gravity is real. That's all it is. Gravity is real. I don't care how strong the stock is, how strong the sector is. If you keep on buying stock on the 12th, 13th, 15th, 27th floor, eventually you're going to get pulled. The further a stock gets away from its breakout level, the higher probability, eventually you will get pulled. And again, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, if you've ever heard of this before, you know, you jump off the first floor, skin knee. You, for, you jump off you know, the 21st floor, you're probably having a severed head. We're not having this conversation with you, just the RIP memory of. So it's very, very important to understand the dynamics of where the market is and if you look at the final numbers this week, pretty bad, man. You know, the, the Dow lost seven tenths of a percent. Again, I couldn't care less about the Dow. The S&P lost 2%. That's a big deal, right? That's obviously a big deal. Uh, but the NASDAQ 100, the QQQs, poor, poor, poor continued performance. And again, this didn't start this week. This started when we engulfed that candle on July the 11th. And then everything became an inside day waiting for the next leg to come down. Uh, 3.7% loss on the NASDAQ 100. Now, we're coming into uh, major uh, earnings uh, season, right? Netflix uh, kicked it off on Thursday. Uh, the initial reaction down and then the spike back up, you know, kind of a muted reaction of earnings uh, down about 10 on the day, kind of engulfed uh, this whole channel here to lose uh, the 65-day EMA. But the most important part is what happens on earnings. So for example, let's use Tesla as a barometer. So Tesla and Google report on Tuesday. Obviously, the narrative on Tesla has dramatically changed uh, all the way through this move here. Better than expected delivery numbers, all that good stuff. But it doesn't mean, you know, it doesn't mean that the stock is going to react on earnings, good or bad. It just means that, hey, we had an incredible hell of a run. We caught a nice little pivot on Friday below the 10-day moving average. Is it possible, you know, we get one more day of selling and we get all, you know, we go down to this 233, you know, 230 level? Yeah, yeah, you know, that's kind of where I'm focused on uh, on Monday ahead of Tuesday. Again, I don't know what's going to happen on Tuesday's earnings. Uh, the good news for Tesla shareholders were after this big run, this is just a nice, healthy pullback. Again, not indicative of what's going to happen uh, on their uh, earnings release, but the good news is, and again, you know, we try to look at both sides of the of the coin. The good news is the stock, despite a lot of um, delivery cut estimates and some downgrades, really went on a hell of a run. So we don't know, right? We don't know how the market is going to react on earnings for Tesla, but we do know what we could control. Great pivot on Friday. Uh, lost the 10 day moving average. Again, if it loses Friday's channel, I think there's a shot we could get down to this uh, 30, 33 level. 
uh, ahead of uh, Tuesday earnings. Other than that, I have no idea what's going to happen uh, with the stock. Uh, you have Google. But if you guys remember all week, we were talking about buyers were coming in 240, 245 weekly. You guys remember that all week, 240, 245 weekly puts uh, with size. Again, follow the smart money. Usually institutional money flow is an indicative, really good case of where stock potentially goes, especially after it confirms levels. Uh, Google also reports on Tuesday. Again, massive, massive run-up. Uh, you know, your guess is as good as mine, how the market reacts uh, to earnings. But you can see from the point of view uh, from the macro chart, hey, it's hanging on here. Uh, it's hanging on to its 200-day uh, 200 day here. So it's, you know, kind of important, right? It's kind of important here uh, that it defends this level or the market goes lower. But here's where the macro point of view is, regardless of earnings, regardless of this, that, or a third. Here we are, right? And this is kind of the conversation where once again, we have to have, okay? If you're a brand new, uh, brand new um, watcher to this channel, it's a very basic case of technical analysis. Above the 50-day moving average, is super bullish. Below the 50-day moving average is super bearish. Again, let me give you a case in point. So here was 2022. You guys remember that? Right? 2022. We lost the 50-day moving average. And what happened is for the next calendar year, the NASDAQ was down about 35%. So what happens when we got back up above the 50-day moving average, right? We got back above the 50-day moving average and we've basically rallied for the last two years, right? We've basically rallied for the last two years uh, not looking back. But here we are kind of present day. So, and again, we we don't know what the future is going to hold. We just take it day by day by day. So the 50-day moving average is roughly 470 on the Qs. Okay, right now we're at 475. We're not at that point yet of, of, of having this conversation. Well, if we close below the 50-day moving average, the narrative changes. That's a fact. But before we get there, is it possible the market turns around again? Three point seven percent rally on uh, excuse me, decline on the QQQs is kind of a big deal uh, for this week. Is it possible we get a dead cap balance this week? Sure, absolutely possible. But just to kind of, kind of have the preliminary discussion coming into this week, um, any close guys? Again, just write this down. Any close below the fifty day moving average of four seventy, just in case. Uh, the selling is prolonged, okay? Any close below the 470 moving average, 50-day uh, moving average, that's going to be a big deal, right? I I again, if you are a student of the market or just basic technical analysis, you know the importance of this level. I have no idea if they're even going to test it. I don't know if they're going to hold it. I don't know if it's gonna they're going to lose it. But I do know the significance of what happens if the market does embrace the selling and we lose the 50-day moving average on a closing basis. Again, we don't want to put the cart in front of the horse. We don't want to freak anybody out. This is just a preliminary conversation because we're not that far off, okay? We're really not. Do I think the first test of the 50-day moving average is going to hold and they're going to bounce? Absolutely, right? Like that's my game plan uh, for the week. You know, I'm, I'm obviously going to continue to short channels until we get to the 50-day moving average, but I'm very well aware that we don't lose the 50-day moving average on the first attempt. The first attempt is usually a very, very violent snapback. So the initial, the initial uh, theme going into this week is, yeah, I'm definitely still uh, watching downside channels, but if we get back down to the 50-day moving average, I definitely want to take a bounce on the cues because, again, if you look at any uh, any battleground area of the queues on, on charts for the last X amount of years, you'll see the first attempt uh, usually will get defended. So that's kind of the plan uh, going into uh, the week. Uh, most important part is we want to see if uh, the selling pressure continues. Uh, the one thing that we did see this week that we haven't seen in a while, all the indexes that are weak, right? Uh, usually we had the Dow strong and the IWM strong and the queues are going lower. This week we finally saw uh, weakness in all of the other indexes. So if you look at the IWM, obviously the big, uh, big winner, uh, especially for the last uh, you know week and a half or so. You know, again, this thing if it continues to go lower, we could see a test of the ten day moving average of two thirteen. Uh, if you look at the spies, spies closed below uh, the twenty day moving average. Next stop is roughly around the 246 level, excuse me, 546 level. This should have pulled that 546 level. You can see here the last time it tested the 34-day 
uh, EMA, we touch this really thick red line and then we bounce. So, you know, four, you know, roughly around the 546 level, uh, there should be a bounce attempt in the market. Uh, at least initially, again, you can see that right here, how visually we saw that on, uh, on May the 31st. So we're coming up pretty much in the same area. Uh, and the QQQs, uh, again, they continue to bleed. Um, I think, you know, the next stop, if we lose Friday's channels, is going to be this 472.50 level. And then ultimately, again, this is where you want to at least take the initial test for potential bounce on the market right around the 470 level. So again, a lot of good channels continue. Um, I'm watching NVIDIA, guys. And, you know, I'm watching this thing. This is one of the one of the names that we talk about, the 50-day moving average. It's a very big area. Q, you know, this thing has been hovering and building a nice base below the 34, uh, 34 EMA and right above the 50-day moving average. Guys, watch this in video, okay? I, I get it. It's going to have great earnings. It's going to be fantastic. I get it. I'm not worrying about two weeks from now. I'm not worried about three weeks from now. I'm not waiting about, you know, I'm not thinking about their products and all that stuff. It's for me, all is important is the 50-day. If it loses the 50-day moving average, you can see here it's gotten defended here several times. If it loses the 50-day moving average, we're going to get a trade out of it. We're going to get a nice trade out of it uh, does it come? Does it confirm? I have no idea. Your guess is as good as mine, uh, but it's definitely a name that I am watching uh, this week. It's definitely one of the names uh, that have not uh, confirmed or major technical damage yet. Uh, another name, uh, you know, keep an eye on this week is Shopify. Uh, Shopify, again, look how close this thing is losing the 50-day moving average. I'm definitely, definitely watching this thing. Uh, look at a name like Hims, right? Again, same thing. Look how close this thing, you know, Hims had a big, big run. But look how close Hims is to losing the 50-day moving average. We definitely want to watch that as well. On the flip side is Coinbase, right? Uh, Bitcoin continues to, I guess, pop up. Guys, look how close, uh, you know, look how clo close Coin is to reclaiming the top of the channel of the June highs. If it reclaims the June highs, man, this thing could really, really wake up. So again, you always want to be prepared uh, for both sides of the market. You always want to know the dynamics of the macro scale the sentiment, all that good stuff. Again, if you're a trader, act like a trader. If you're an investor, why are you having a conversation, right? So for example, if I'm looking at the 50-day moving average on NVIDIA and I'm looking for a multiple day move to, to the downside, assuming it confirms, why are you trying to convince me how good their earnings is going to be? Their earnings are in three weeks. I'm worrying about today. I'm worrying about the interval. I'm worrying about winning my interval today. I don't want to hear about three weeks. And that's the one big disconnect between investors and traders. Traders are in their own uh, lane. They're on. The, uh, uh, they're locked in in their own process. Investors are trying to uh, trying to entertain the idea that their opinion matters of what's going to happen three weeks from now, three months from now. We're worried about today, guys. Respect each other. Traders don't care what investors are doing. Investors shouldn't really care what it, what uh, traders are doing. Stick with your own lane. Carry about your own. Uh, finances and let the market play out for itself. Guys, God bless everybody. Have a great weekend. And with God's help, I will see you all on Monday. Take care.